Hey, how's it going everyone? It's me, It's Count, here with a brand new Pokemon Go Raid Guide video. Today I am going to be covering the Alolan Legendary Pokemon Tapu Koko. This Pokemon is one of the stronger legendaries that you can go up against, but if you bring the right counters, you should have no problem taking down this raid boss. I'm going to be telling you how you can do that through this video, so let's roll the intro and jump right into it. Alright, so let's dive right into it. Tapu Koko is an electric and fairy type legendary Pokemon, and it tends to do a lot more damage with very less defense. It's going to kind of be like Rayquaza and a couple of other Pokemon that are hard hitting, but they can get taken down pretty easily with the right counters. So let's cover those counters right now. First and foremost, this Pokemon is weak against both ground and poison types. And when you think about these particular types, there's quite a lot of great options. First and foremost, the best Mega Evolution that you can bring is of course going to be Mega Gengar with Sludge Bomb. That is of course because it is one of the highest DPS raid damage dealers currently in the game. But of course, it is also offset by a really low amount of HP and defense, which means it can get knocked out pretty easily with certain moves. So I highly suggest you only bring this Pokemon if your raid mates have poison types that can benefit from the Mega Evolution damage boost otherwise you are best off just going with a whole bunch of really powerful ground types and these are some of the options that you could bring first and foremost there is of course exadro this is the highest damage output ground type pokemon currently in the game and of course it's not even a legendary so most players will have free access to this pokemon but speaking of legendaries, there is of course Landorus and Groudon. They are two of the most powerful ground type Pokemon aside from Exadrill. They are also very reliable considering that they have a high amount of defense stats as well as HP. This means that both of these Pokemon will be able to dish out a lot of damage against Tapu Koko before it gets knocked out. Especially Groudon, considering that Groudon has just some of the most well-rounded stats currently in the game, and that is something you should just not ignore. But if you are lacking in any of these ground types, then you could also opt to bring poison types. Of course, there's Pokemon like Roserade. That is going to be a really strong option. Since fairy types are weak against poison types, this is always a great second option. But you will want to be careful because a lot of the strongest poison types also have the dark typing and dark types are weak against fairy types. So all in all, Roserade is going to be your absolute best option when it comes to poison types. There are also some other Pokemon that you could bring like Rhyperior with Mud Slap and Earthquake. I really do think that Rhyperior is an underrated Pokemon when it comes to raid battles. It has a lot of versatility and it does have a really strong type combination. So if you are lacking in some really strong Pokemon and you have a whole bunch of Rhyperior, this could be the direction that you could go. Now speaking of which, if you are lacking in very strong legendaries and mythicals and rare Pokemon, you could opt to go with a lot of different budget counters. First and foremost, you could go with Mega Beedrill. This is another great Mega Evolution option, especially because it is one of the strongest poison types currently in the game. And of course, any Mega Evolution is going to bolster your entire raid group. So if your friends are rolling with a whole bunch of poison types, then it might be good for you to bring a Mega Beedrill drill or a mega gengar to bolster up that damage there is also Mamoswine with Mudslap and Bulldoze. That is another great option that you could bring that is budget friendly. And the nice thing about Mamoswine is that its shadow form is also available. And that is actually one of the top DPS ground types currently in the game. So if you have a really strong shadow Mamoswine, that is definitely one you should consider bringing. Tapu Koko is both electric and fairy, which means it's going to be weather boosted by rainy weather or cloudy weather. So if you're looking for a weather boosted Tapu Koko, these are the weather boosts that you will want to watch for if you are raiding this Pokemon. But if you want a weather boost that's going to benefit you even more, then of course there is cloudy weather for your poison types, and then there's of course sunny and clear weather for your ground types. This is probably the most ideal, considering that this Pokemon is on the stronger end when it comes to its damage output, so you will want to take it down as fast as possible, as well as just preventing it from dealing a lot 
lot more extra damage to your Pokemon. Now, speaking of weather boosts, if you are looking for the perfect IV of Tapu Koko, then you will want to catch one that is 1810 if it is not weather boosted, but if it is weather boosted, you will want one that is 2263. Those are the magic numbers when it comes to this Pokemon, so if you want that perfect IV, then make sure you write these numbers down and look for those when you raid this Pokemon. The amount of trainers that you will want to bring will range from anywhere between 2 and 6 trainers. If you want to defeat this boss comfortably, I highly suggest you go with about five to six trainers. But if you are looking for a little bit of a challenge or you want to beat it with the least number of trainers as possible, then you could probably do it with just one other trainer as long as you have the best friendship bonus as well as the best counters available to both of you. Like if you and one other person had both a Mega Gengar or a Mega Beedrill and a whole bunch of poison types, that could probably be enough for you to duo this Pokemon. Or if both of you have really strong ground types and it is sunny outside, then maybe that will be enough for you to defeat this boss. But again, if you do not want to waste raid passes, I highly suggest you go with as many people as possible. So maybe you can get a group together of about four or five other trainers and you can go around defeating this boss really easily. I have to say, for the release of Alolan region Pokemon in Pokemon Go, this was a pretty good choice to have as the first legendary raid boss from this region. It is a very strong Pokemon, and it does have a pretty unique typing of Electric and Fairy, and it's definitely going to make a splash in some of the different Go Battle League metas. Considering that there's very few Pokemon in the Master League that have both the Electric and Fairy typing, this could be definitely a very strong option if you're looking to construct a team that is going to be somewhat off meta. And just aesthetically, this is also one of the coolest looking Pokemon, I would say, among a lot of the legendaries that are available in the game. And yes, I do think that it does have a lot of fanfare, considering that it is an Alolan Generation legendary. And yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this guide. There really isn't too much else to it. Just bring a whole bunch of really powerful ground types or poison types and make sure you coordinate mega evolutions with your friends. And yeah, you should be able to take down this boss no problem. But yeah, that's going to be it for this guide video. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it to be helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And also let me know in the comment section below what your best Tapu Koko is. Feel free to flex. I'm always Always open to that in my comment section. But yeah, I am Count Jinsula. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.